The logic of this transaction is that we keep on grow, executing in our strategy of growth. So uh, what we're doing is we're combining high quality Kazakh uranium assets from ARMS and the uranium one side and we're putting together one of the five largest global producers in the world. So it's just continuing to execute on our strategy of growth. Um, so we, we're taking some of the world's best uranium mines, putting them together in a company, and our shareholders continue to have exposure towards these wonderful mines going forward. Uh, the first reaction from the market was actually a, a sharp fall in the price uh, of, of your shares. So yes. why do you think of this? And of course, in every kind of these operations, we always hear about investors wanting more. Is there any chance of a sweetener? I think there's two reasons why the share price traded off initially. Um, one is it's a complex transaction. Um, and the reason why it's complex is shareholders didn't entirely understand that the change of control premium is coming to them in cash through the dividend. Um, so as we've been explaining that, they understand that much better. So there's a bit of investor education on our side. The second reason is there were some concerns with regards to having a controlling Russian shareholder. But once again, as we've pointed out to our shareholders, Ros Adam, our ultimate holding company after this transaction, has been a very responsible corporate citizen in the global markets for a number of decades. Um, so as the investor education is going through, we've seen a lot of shares trade, a lot of buyers out there that likes this transaction. And so it's actually going quite well at the moment. So when you say a Russian um, shareholder, it's, it's not only a Russian shareholder, it's the Russian state. Yes. Uh, how risky is this? It's actually not risky at all. In fact, we are arguing that it's de-risking the business significantly. Where previously there were concerns with security of tenure of our assets in Kazakhstan. Uh, since we're a small company, we have a very significant company in the form of Rosatom, which is the world's largest integrated nuclear company. Um, taking control uh, and so our investors get an opportunity to invest next to them. Um, so not only do they have the size, but they also have been acting, as I say, as a very responsible corporate citizen for decades. You know, if you look at the amount of uranium that Ros Adam has been shipping off to the United States and Canada, you can effectively say that a portion of uh, the America's lights have been kept on by Russia. And so with, with these responsible people as uh, major shareholders, I think our shareholders are starting to understand it's, uh, it's not a bunch of cowboy rations, but it's a very responsible entity. And so the fact that they're a state-owned entity actually uh, improves on that because the uranium industry or the nuclear industry is a highly regulated environment. And so the Russian state is going to stick to all these uh, uh, regulatory constraints that have been imposed globally and that has been accepted by a lot of states. So it's actually a very responsible entity that we have as a controlling entity. Talking about regulation then, uh, how is the process going in terms of uh, receiving the authority for this transaction to go through? We have largely four applications that, that has to go in, um, Canadian, Australian, American and, and Kazakh approvals. Um, the one that could potentially take the longest is the Kazakh approvals, uh, but we're confident after discussion with all of these regulatory bodies uh, that the approval should be forthcoming in a very, very acceptable time frame. So we expect that we'll close the transaction by the end of this year um, and n none of these four regulatory entities would be a problem. So you expect the approval before the end of the year for every single of these four? Yeah, we actually expect to close the transaction before the end of the year, so we should have the approvals a month or two before year end. I guess you already applied for this uh, approval. What are the Americans saying? Well, obviously the American uh, uh, environment is one that we've dealt with uh, quite some time. Bear in mind that we did a transaction with ARMZ last year when we acquired the Karatau mine from ARMZ. And uh, when we acquired a Karatau, we had to speak with Cepheus. And so um, with the fact that Russia and the U.S. have had very significant nuclear cooperation over the last number of decades, uh, and the fact that we've gone through the Karatau transaction, uh, we feel comfortable that they'll see this as a positive. Why uh, Uranium One was so eager to finish, to, to accept this take, takeover? Well, we've been looking at uh, growth opportunities all across the world. Um, and you have to understand that the growth opportunities are very limited. Um, we have looked in Africa, we've looked in Australia, we've looked across uh, both Americas, North America and South America. And we find that what we're doing is we putting together more high quality assets. You know, Kazakhstan has been typified as the Saudi Arabia of the Uranium world. Um, so you have the, the cheapest, the easiest to mine uranium, all in extremely large deposits found in Kazakhstan. Um, so to go in with an extremely strong partner in, into Kazakhstan is something that's uh, certainly very beneficial to our shareholders. Uh, also, it's not something that we've just been thinking of recently. 
Uh, we've been dealing with arms now for almost two years and we've been talking about various strategies for a very long period of time. Um, so having added Karatau last year, we've looked at further opportunities and this one was the next logical step. Is the price right, considering the fall in the prices of your shares? Yes, no, definitely so. Um, that's a very good question. What we did do is we uh, agreed with ARMS that they would pay a market-related premium to our net asset value. So an independent valuation or valuation by the analysts in the market. They're not, they also pay a, uh, a premium to market, but if you compare it to the underlying value of the company, it's very market-related. So they're not stealing the company from shareholders at a depressed uh, valuation they're actually paying a 30% premium, which is very market related to the net asset value, which is the underlying valuation. But we can say that the cycle of uranium prices are at a low point. Yes. So how this affects the, the valuation of the company? Yeah, that, that's true. But you must remember that our shareholders continue to have exposure towards the, the, the uranium commodity. Um, if they were forced out for cash, then you could say, well, you know, Alms has made use of the cycle. But they, not, they get the premium in cash in their pockets, uh, but they continue to have exposure through their shares. So they actually have the best of both worlds. So you said you look for um, possibilities, opportunities pretty much everywhere. So Kazakhstan is still the most important place to be. Kazakhstan has certainly the best uranium assets in the world. They've been the most um, reliable producer of uranium. Um, but they've also, um, Kazakh assets have been the most affordable from our company perspective. Uh, and this is where Arms and ourselves have seen the world entirely exactly the same. When we've looked at assets uh, in, in uh, Africa and compared notes, uh, we found that our ideas were the same. And so the next logical step from an affordability point of view and being responsible to our shareholders was in Kazakhstan and not elsewhere. We heard some news on the government trying to impose new taxes on minerals and, and oil. Yes. Will this affect uranium? The new tax law came into being in February of last year. Uh, and this tax law has been a very responsible tax code imposed by the Kazakh government. And so we've been operating under this new tax code for more than a year now. Uh, and we're very comfortable with the tax code. Um, the, the, uh, the Kazakh government has actually put together a tax code from a uranium perspective that we are very happy with. Uh, the possibility of increases or new taxes? You know what, um, there's been an introduction of an excess profits tax last year. Um, that excess profits tax actually just replaced some other taxes. Um, so our overall tax burden stayed exactly the same. So we have no concern. We think that the fiscal situation in Kazakhstan has been very uh, responsibly managed by the Kazakh government. And a final question in terms of management, how much the company will change yes. in terms of taking decisions and the consultations that I guess you now have to have with Moscow? Arms has actually kept uh, or decided to keep the board largely the same and management exactly the same. So I'll continue as CEO, our chairman continues as an independent chairman. We have an independent uh, majority board. Uh, none of our management will be leaving us. Uh, so Arms has been looking towards having an outside management team manage the business. And so nobody's going anywhere. We continue to manage the business. And if I can, a question also on the outlook for the industry. We mentioned the mm -hmm. price fall. Will this be... There will be a recovery in, in that sense? Without a doubt. Um, you know, when you look forward uh, a few years, you see that uranium is, well, currently, but also looking forward, the new supply that's coming in on the uranium side is not filling all these new reactors that are being built. So we're still operating in a supply shortage environment. And so the issue is not do we have enough uranium in the ground? We do. The question is at what price do you extract it? And so all the calculations we've done show that we need a significantly higher uranium price to actually fill that gap. And so from a utility perspective, they're insensitive towards that price. And therefore, we're certainly very bullish on the uranium prices going forward. When we can see the recovery and what kind of recovery you can see, considering that we have like longer term, we have 150, 200 uh, projects of nuclear plants being built. Yes. Well, you know what, the uranium market is a very small market, so it's very difficult to forecast exactly when it's going to happen. So over the short term, we just never come up with a forecast. But medium to long term, you know, three to five years from now, we expect the uranium price to go up significantly.